said, oops, I might have just clicked something by mistake. Sorry. Uh, with that being said, <laughs> welcome. Welcome to, I believe, our last session of the day slash night, depending on where you are in the world or the morning, if you are somewhere where I don't know. But thank you for joining. This is Sharing Your Story and Social Media Panel. We have three awesome ladies who are going to talk. I believe for about 15 minutes each uh, to kind of share a little bit about their story, social media. Sure, part of BG25 and we'll probably do five AM. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah. And then we're gonna get into some QA. I already have some questions in my mind, um, you know, about all the social media platforms. I want to know the ins and outs of TikTok. <laughs> and so I'm expecting some great Ashley. <laughs> I was gonna Ashley your girlfriend out. I don't even have TikTok. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of like the geriatric of social media, like. <laughs> um, well, with that being said, who would like to kick us off? I don't mind going, so I don't. <laughs> I, oh, I knew the girls were going to be like, Ashley. So, you know, I'll put myself out there. Um, I just want to say, I, I want brownie points, please. You know, I want brownie points in the chat here, guys. This is going to be short and sweet um, because the, as I said, our little top tip, the pre the questions that we got sent through to us prior to this do answer a lot of my story. So this is nice and short and sweet. So I started sharing my story in 2016. My only regret is that I didn't start sharing it sooner. I can remember finding out my dad had HD and turning to Google for information. From 2007 until 2022, the online support has changed dramatically. In 2007, I felt so alone. Now, in 2022, I have friends around the world I interact with daily. This might be people sharing their story publicly or reaching out to me via private messages. My name is Ashley. I am 28 years old and I live at risk of Huntington's disease. I created the hashtag I'm not drunk lifestyle blog in 2016 to help others in the community make friends, raise awareness, learn more about HD and share my story. I want people to see that even though my dad has Huntington's disease, I cared for him through my teenage years and adult years, and I live at risk of the same disease, there is still hope. I can still live a happy, positive life, one that I am proud of and become a person I know my dad would be proud of. It isn't always easy. There are days my eyes are filled with tears, but I share that too. 15 years of Huntington's disease has taught me a lot. I have grown to be strong, independent, resilient and hopeful for the future. And through the hashtag I'm not drunk blog, I hope to inspire others to do the same. Dad is safe, happy and well cared for in a nursing home close to me. Although the pandemic has been difficult, I cherish the memories we continue to make and the ones we have made. I have spoken on podcasts, the BBC News, local newspapers, magazines, been invited to speak to pharma companies and featured on other bloggers' sites about mental health, my personal challenges with it, going through the testing process and deciding not to test, relationships, day-to-day -day caring and living at risk and the importance of awareness. That is record timekeeping for an intro from me. I welcome all the questions, so I do. And yeah, I'll let one of the Emmas take it over. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot shorter than I was anticipating. Thank you. I'm so <laughs> glad you did. Stunning, stunning. <laughs> do you want to go next or do you want me to go next? You can crack on. I feel like I'm probably the least interesting, so... Well, I don't think I'm... Well, we'll have a competition. <laughs> well, we'll decide who's Emma 1 and Emma 2 after. Go. All right, OK. <laughs> um, so my intro is more of a background story, I guess, because I've only been sharing... Um, well, so my Instagram handle is mypops... Un no. Mypops underscore and underscore HD, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Um, and I set it up in 
well, almost a year ago. Um, and literally the only reason why I set it up is I'm just such a bad talker um, in terms of if I'm feeling upset or emotional, or I just like bottle it up. And then every now and then I just get so overwhelmed um, and it all comes out. Um, so I thought it was just a good way of being able to let it out basically um, and if it can help anyone else then that's a bonus um, but a little bit of a background about me and my family um, so growing up we didn't know anything about HD um, never heard of it before um, but we always remember my granddad um, we used to call him the dancing man because um, he just never stayed still um, but he wasn't diagnosed with HD until he was in his late 60s. Um, the doctors thought he had late onset Parkinson's, so none of us were any the wiser. Um, he passed away in 2012, and I think at that point, I well, I was only sort of 18, 19, um, and it, it just, I hadn't really, I hadn't dissolved in my mind, like I just didn't really know the seriousness of it or the fact that then that meant my dad was at risk which then meant I could be at risk um but my almost my granddad passing away then triggered symptoms in my dad um and then he was actually diagnosed then gene positive in 2014 um I think then once I'd started doing some research on it if you looked back you could see that his symptoms he was already symptomatic um again he couldn't really stay still that much and he had awful mood swings um about a year after he was diagnosed he had to stop driving he was refused where well, he got pulled over by the police a few times um and he also got uh refused fuel um because they thought he was drunk at the petrol station um but at the time he lived um about four hours away from me in quite a remote rural place um so we decided then in 2015 that he was going to move up closer to myself and my brother um so ever since sort of 2015 I've been his main carer and life organizer we'll call it um appointments and all sorts um and I think the fact that I was then spending so much time with him made me then realize oh wait this could be me um and it just made me realize the seriousness of it and it got to the point where then I was like well if there's something I could find out about myself then I want to know about it so I decided to um start the testing process late 2015 um and then I found out in May 2016 that I was gene negative um which was a relief um but I think there's like a huge thing where in you know people who don't really know about HD that oh well she's tested negative so it's that's great like she doesn't have to deal with it but you you deal with it all the time on a daily basis um unfortunately then my brother was diagnosed um he tested gene positive in the September 16 and he had has had two children um prior to being tested so they are also at risk um for a few years, probably up until about 2018, me and my brother shared the responsibilities, but then I think it was taking a huge toll on my brother's mental health. Um, and he no longer really sees my dad or has anything to do with him because I think he got to a point where he felt like he was looking in a mirror and sort of seeing himself in 20, 20 years time. Um, so sort of since then, it's been me really. Um, lost friendships along the way um it's really hard when you've got you've got all this responsibility um of i don't know looking after someone and then also trying to look after yourself and trying to live your own life um and having people around you that don't understand if you can't or don't want to do something um so but now i've fortunately got a really good support system around me um they always say you can count your best friends um on one hand and that I can certainly do um sorry I feel like this is a really long story <laughs> keep, going. Keep, it. Going. keep going um in 20 at the end of 2018 I got engaged um and my dad absolutely loves my now husband like to the point where 
more than me, I swear. I literally go and see him and he's like, how's Jason? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good too. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> um, but we got engaged in 2018 and we decided that we were going to get married in 2020. COVID. That was great. Um, <laughs> so we managed to have our original date, which is October the 22nd. Um, but we decided that the restrictions were up then. So there was only 15 of us, but my husband just knew how important it was for me to have my dad walk me down the aisle. And I just, it was one of those things that if I had, we could have postponed and then had a really big wedding, like what we had planned, but I would have, I, I just knew I would have regretted it if it like we decided to postpone and then he couldn't walk me down the aisle. So we did that just so that we could have those memories together. Um, I don't know about anyone else, but I've also noticed a massive deterioration um, in my dad since lockdown. And I don't know whether that's because he is not got any sort of social interaction other than me, um, which I think I'm great, so that's all right. Um, but I think he needs a few more people around him. Um, but so we sort of had a breakthrough last year um, because he decided to, ex well, he agreed to start accepting care, which has taken a huge toll off me. Um, they come in and do his food for him and his personal care. Um, but I am continuing and will continue to fight for extra care um, from social care until the day he gets what he deserves. Um, so yeah, my pops in HD, to be honest, is literally for me to just be like there and get all of my emotions out and just share the story so that hopefully someone else might think, oh, okay, like I can talk to her or everyone is at different stages along the journey. So I think we can all learn so much from each other where, you know, if, our family member is late stages early stages mid stages everyone can help each other um so that is why i set it up there we go thanks i want to give you a hug but like it's not really way, <laughs> that's on to, on to me now is it you have to tell me when yeah. to shut up now. um so i I very much, we very much lived as a family with HD as a secret. Um, we weren't told until I was 14 and my sister was 18. Um, my mum found out when I was about five that she had the gene, but she was very much ashamed of it. Um, her mum had quite a difficult time when she was unwell because when, when she was unwell, it wasn't really known about. Um, and my mum was just so upset about it. She kind of hid it, didn't want to be treated differently. Very proud woman. So it was very much a secret. And even when she became quite obviously disabled, it was still something that wasn't really talked about openly. Even when people knew she was unwell, so we were kind of hidden away all the time. Um, I qualified as a paramedic in 2011. Um, I, I'd looked after, after her mum from like a young age, um, from sort of 14, 15 with her sort of psychiatric issues. Uh, whilst my sister was at uni and then as she got more sort of physically disabled I would chip in with that as well but after university um, when I moved back from Bristol um, we kind of just muddled through until things got really bad after I had my daughter. Um, I had my daughter in 2015 and she took a huge plummet just as I gave birth you know a huge change in kind of how she looked after herself and we fought for about well, about 10 months, I think, to get any sort of form of recognition or help from social services. And it was awful, really awful, and resulted in my dad suffering sort of massive burnout and, and being in bed for three to four weeks, which just isn't my dad at all. Um, and then and then mum started to accept carers and life got a bit easier. Um, and as she started to accept carers uh, and weirdly became slightly more disabled, um, she started to enjoy life again. She'd find, find sort of companionship in the carers and she was happy to go out and do things. Um, so we were a bit more public about it, but we still hadn't set up online. Um, and then in 2018, we tried to get continuing healthcare, which was a huge battle. And after a year of fighting, we managed to get it. And I remember sitting with my sister in a cafe and I was just like, I've been a paramedic for, for, I think I was a paramedic for eight years at that point, whatever it was, and I was thinking, and that was really hard. How do people who don't have that knowledge and skills do it? Um, so I said to her, I think we need to stop 
living in secret about this now. Like I think we need to go go public and help people. So I set up a um, campaign for my brain just on Instagram and Facebook. I didn't really know what I was doing, just big idea. I thought, yeah, I can do this. I can help people. And then met uh, my business partner, Catherine, through Instagram. We went for a coffee. And you just, I think with HD, you think you're alone. You think it's a really horrific thing that no one understands. But as soon as you speak to somebody else who's had it in their family, my jaw just hit the floor. She was talking about her dad sort of six years before um, and what she'd been through before he died. And I just sat there and was like, that, that's exactly like me. Like, social services not understanding, medical professionals not getting it, um, even though it's a really horrific disease. So we sort of went in on it together. Um, and we're, what, four years in now? And they're all small things that we've done, but you can see the background on my thing. We've written a children's book to explain it. Um, we do advocacy for families on like a small scale um, and raise awareness too of the highs and the lows. Um, and I think I, I tend to stick to Instagram because I locked myself out of my Facebook. So I think my Instagram automatically loads to Facebook, um, but I've stuck to Instagram because it tends to be, I think people that want to follow accounts and find stuff tend to use Instagram, it tends to be where they go. Um, so we've used it as a platform. Um, and I was saying to Ashley earlier, tiny amount of followers really, but they stay because I think when you have a condition like this in your family, people tend to stay because they, they want the advice or they want to have that shared experience. Um, and I think what I've noticed is I used to be quite shy about expressing grief or expressing how difficult things were. But every time I have shared something like that or written a blog, the amount of people that get something from it because they feel less lonely or they they feel that kind of belonging that other people are going through that has been amazing um and I think for me if you know you can look at it as like this is the worst thing in my life and don't get me wrong it is I'd do anything for my mum to not have had Huntington's disease I just try and use what it's taught me to help other people um and I'm really fortunate that me and my sister have both tested negative at sort of um about four years apart I think we tested um um, and we kind of both always advocate that, you know, it never leaves you. You get massive survivor's guilt. I've never really sort of jumped up and down about being sort of gene free because of the, the, the emotions that come with it. And for me, I'm just like, well, I've got to use this opportunity now to to help people who aren't as fortunate as me um, or who need some guidance through that process. And I think my experience in healthcare has a, a good help with it as well because I can understand the processes um I'm pretty feisty when it comes to fighting social services or things like that because I know what their duties are so I think that's kind of where I've had a bit of a, a swing on it is that I've been able to advise people kind of how to get professional help um so yeah I I'm not as good at, at content as Ashley and, and at M. I'm I'm kind of one of those people that I do it when I can um, but in the future, I do have big hopes for it. We're doing a young carers project at the moment to try and get um, enough funding to do worry bags for young carers and have some more support for them. Um, but yeah, being a not-for-profit, it's small and steady. Um, but yeah, I share a lot about my mum and her experiences. And that even, even when she leaves this world, I'll continue to do so because, like I say, I'll never lose that gratitude of how lucky I was to have a negative result. I think that's all I've got to say. <laughs> I feel like I've waffled. <laughs> that's how I felt, but that was great. <laughs> no structure. Ashley's was really structured. I know. <laughs> I just went. Fine. We had a pre-zoom to like just go over like things about this, right? The amount of jokes that were okay, put out so there I'm about me. I love that. <laughs> so I was, I was trying not to ramble. I, I was trying not to talk too much. I thought you were just gonna like talk so much that I only had to talk for a very small amount of time. <laughs> it's been called M and Over. I'm pretty happy about that. M and Over. Oh, I like it. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> I always say actually, I would um I would love to know. I always ask this, and because I think people follow at different times or look on social media at different times, I always would love to know like what people would like to see or know. Like I always think, oh, should I do this? Or should I do a post about how to get help? Or should I do a post about the medical side? Or should I do a post about this? Like, I'd love to know what people feel is missing from what's online. Because um, I know there's so much 
there's so much around now and like mm-hmm. Ashley was saying when I was 14 I think maybe I had MySpace or something like social media was a bit, so, I was just about to say can you remember yeah, Bebo? Like, MySpace, AIM. Yeah, I'd love to know what people think is missing. Yeah. Um, Well, that's definitely, um, for me right now, I personally love using Instagram because um, I find it a very positive space. I can follow the people that I choose and that then fills my feed with um, the kind of content that I want in my life and I want to see. So I'll follow all my HD wonderful community friends family loved ones all the different accounts that I'm connected with I'll follow all of those and then I'll follow some you know amazing influencers from around the world that just inspire me daily um so I find Instagram like a really positive place for that um I'm a bit like yourself Emma I have steered away from Facebook a little um it was at quite a few years ago my Instagram automatically posts to my Facebook which is super handy um but I just find Instagram to be like a super positive place and you can be funny and silly and if it anybody watches engage on Facebook as well I never ever really have much engagement on Facebook it yeah was, I know. definitely feel like I definitely feel like I reach more people on Instagram and I get more like I get a lot of private messages of people sharing their stories and that's you know I feel like I get that more on Instagram and like anybody who has been on my page there's the most silliest reels and videos and it's just it's like a really fun space and that's what I want to do with my blog I want to make it you know one of the worst things in my life I wish my daddy wasn't sick and I wish all these other people around the world weren't sick weren't sick with Huntington's and I could make it all go away um but I can't I'm not a doctor but what I can do is I can share with the rest of the world how I have turned one of the most negative things in my life into one of the most positive because I have got some of the most amazing friends and two of them are on this panel with me here today Seth I'm undecided about you if I'm honest <laughs> no I'm joking I'm joking I promise Man, have you seen the questions there on the thing yeah right. oh what's have we got questions yeah so one of them is, um how do you guys manage posting content when things are really hard with your mum and dad's care Ashley can answer that one because I don't I'm quite lazy I generally just post when I'm like I'm gonna post today um I don't plan it in advance I just do it when I have time which is probably where my page is quite static whereas Ashley's very good at planning every week we talked about this earlier I'm a yeah. bit of a <laughs> so um for me personally time management is a big thing um right now at this point in my life my dad is in a nursing home so I do obviously have that wee bit more of a free time and you know I don't have any dependence on me right now in other words I don't have any children or anything um so I personally spend some time on a Sunday and um, it could be anything up to three hours and I pre-plan my content for the week ahead um this was really helpful when I was looking after dad I just was really conscious about my time management and I wanted to make sure that my education dad's care my social life and then obviously the blog was all getting like a nice little snippet of time and I didn't feel like I was you know oh a little bit of this and a little bit of that but I haven't looked at you know haven't talked to my friends in real life and how long that's um, what you were saying but, earlier about balance on in, like social media yeah. I think it, it's um having an awareness that you can get sucked into it can't you you like please like put it in the chat there people how many of you have lay in bed at night and you're literally damn my thing's not working right you're lying in bed holding your phone and it's just scroll scroll <laughs> scroll and it's one tiktok video after another yeah, and the TikTok, next... Ashley. no i well okay instagram reels is more <laughs> my thing it's an easier app to use i find but come on we've all got into bed at like 10 o'clock at night and the next thing you look at your phone and you're going it's half one in the morning and I've been scrolling Instagram reels this entire time definitely get a get a good routine into your life in a cutoff period just to be healthy um but look at guys I do it as well I get sucked in and I there's a question for uh, M Ash yes yeah if you click on Q&A somebody's oh yeah saw your message the day from your dad saying I love you it warm my heart Oh, we did the same again this morning, bless him. Um, how do you Emma, tell us, for anybody who isn't following your Instagram stories, tell us about what that was. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah. So um, I just randomly like looked at my phone whilst I was at work and it just came up with a message. My dad texted me just saying, I love you. Um, and he Give doesn't say that. I will, I will. And I found not so long ago as well, um, there was, I was sorting out some paperwork. And when I used to go and stay with him down in Cornwall, um, he used to leave for work and like, just on random scrap bits of notes, it just says, I love you, baby. And I've got a few of those, which I'm going to frame. Um, I still have snapshots of on my old Facebook from like 2009 of mum putting stuff on my yeah. Facebook. I've got snapshots. Yeah. I'm so glad that I kept them. Oh, absolutely. And it's like, I go on my Facebook memories now and it's like, he commented he commented on everything <laughs> bless him but I love it um but yeah he he just messaged me um oh Megan's on love Megan oh hi Megan <laughs> um he just messaged me saying I love you and I was like oh bless um and he, yeah he just doesn't say things like that anymore so um it was it was nice but in terms of the question what was it about balance how do you keep um, balancing the good and the bad? And you're really good at that, actually. Some of your stuff is raw, but it's like, yeah, I just you've got a family PhD, you've been through it, then it's it's nice to know that people are open about that. Because sometimes yeah. you don't hear that stuff, do you? It was like I shared um, last year. We took dad, me and my husband took um, my dad away for the weekend, and I genuinely wasn't expecting it to be as hard as what it was. And I just thought, how are people ever going to know what this disease is like if you try and polish of you know <laughs> if you're yeah. trying to make it look shiny um when it's really not so I when I started sharing stuff I was very much like well I'm going to keep it as real as possible um also protecting dad's privacy obviously but like I'm you're not going to share awareness by yeah. not sharing everything that's real well my mum as well as soon as mum kind of her cognition changed where she was slightly less able to kind of I don't know in the earlier stages obviously generally patients with Huntington's can be quite difficult and quite obstructive and change in personality but as she got more sort of cognitively impaired she she became a bit more able to enjoy it and she'd we call her HRH because she always does this with her wave her royal wave <laughs> and like now she likes she'd be like I'm Facebook famous and she loves it so yeah. I, I like yeah. the same as you obviously if anyone's going to share stuff you need to make sure that on a capacity level that person is is going to be comfortable with that and it's in their interests um yeah. i think yeah. um they're also but, able to say yes or no aren't they as well which is yeah. good yeah absolutely every time i pick up my phone i'm like dad let's take a selfie like the smile on his face is so i don't know where he's picked that smile up from and it's <laughs> easier and cheesier and cheesier but I can now just like I'll be in his flat and I'll just be like quickly sending a text and my phone is like this and he'll be like <laughs> I'm like I wasn't even going to take a photo of you dad <laughs> nice they're not living in the shadows though isn't it my mum for years was just so depressed and so scared of people knowing and she was like mm -hmm. and I think that's why when I found Ash's blog called I'm not drunk I was like oh my god like the amount of times that I'd be out with mum as a, a like a an older teen and people would say she was drunk and I'd want to go and say something and she'd be like, don't. And I'd be like, no, but you should, you should say, like, educate yeah. them, tell them what a condition. Um, and she'd be so ashamed of it. And I think when when you turn into something positive, like, she's not proud of her Huntington's, don't get me wrong, but she's accepted it. And I think for your dad as well, it's like that recognition that he's still a human. And I think a lot of the time with these diseases, people just become a shell of who they were, don't they? And people, they don't get treated as Jenny or whoever they were. Um, and I think being able to be open about it and share about it gives them like a sense of self as well doesn't it you know yeah yeah absolutely it's definitely My like she loves it she's she loves <laughs> having attention <laughs> I, I love like, your mom here for you not me what's that about <laughs> no I love your mom Emma she is like such Hilarious. she's just such a spirit and such a soul and I actually like <sighs> I, I was guess offered... you couldn't meet her when you came down we were all meant to go and meet Aww. her I was offered the opportunity to go and meet HRH before <laughs> Christmas I was gonna get a red snow, <laughs> the snow took this away from me and I am not happy but I do it like I, yes um well I do have to admit so spoiler alert Charlie and I were talking today and I think I'm coming back to Cardiff in the summer so yeah no <laughs> yes um, <laughs> but yeah I do have to totally agree with you and like for me sharing dad dad's at that point now where his ability to speak is not great it's 
pretty much gone. Um, so my my brother has power of attorney. Um, but it's definitely like if it's something that you want to do, like if you want to share, um, you know, your story online or share your journey, I would encourage it. I find it a really positive part of my life and I've enjoyed every minute of it, even when I'm going through the hard times, which I have shared with you guys. Um, before Christmas, I was going through a hard time and although I didn't share it right then and there I waited until I felt in a position that when I shared it and I got questions about it I was comfortable answering those um it just makes the whole thing real for people going through the same thing whenever I started the blog my goal was the people coming behind me or in the same journey as me or similar journey I didn't want them going on to Google and finding horror stories and scary, you know, videos and stories about mental asylums and whatever else was on there. I was 14 years old when I was reading all that, but I would say just be mindful. Um, I had like an instance where the posts that I was putting up were questioned and that was quite a difficult time for me but yeah my family and everybody who loves me was very supportive but I I the way I dealt with that was I reached out to um the medical team and I asked them I was like am I doing something wrong should I not have you know should I not have done this should I not be putting pictures of daddy up on social media and they were their response was just so heartwarming um Daddy was always very clean, very well maintained. He was always fully closed. He was sitting with a big smile on his face. There was no issues around that there. Um, so there was never an issue. Um, but it's, it's always it's just... important to put a disclaimer up sometimes though. Like I was just thinking yeah. this, like um, I've shared one video once that was for impact and it was videos of mum's more distressing times. And but I made sure that the start of the video was black with writing with a disclaimer. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes on Instagram, people are a bit, a bit not naughty. I don't know that word, but I think sometimes people need to have a bit of a warning about what's about to come up, you know, like a horrific picture or something quite raw. I would just say if anyone's going to share stuff of the, the more darker times, perhaps put a bit of a disclaimer in another photo first, because there are people that are perhaps like Emma's brother, early stages or or just testing or finding out and it can be quite triggering if you yeah. see something you're not in the right headspace for it it can be quite alarming and I think mm -hmm. it's important to all understand like that I always feel quite responsible that what I post I make sure I've read it 3,000 times and I've yeah, put in there or I've put anything in there that might upset someone like just so you know mum was happy with this or you know um this photo was taken before we had to wear masks or we've made the mask thing was huge you know my sister was really nervous about posting pictures sometimes that I'd put up and I sort of I had to say look we've made a decision as a family that we are going to see mum because she's got a limited time left and I think I think as long as you're open and you don't lie I think people most people are okay you're always going to get one or two that are just looking for an argument but generally I've been fairly well supported as long as you're honest um, you're always yeah I think you're always gonna get like you're gonna get those negative Nellies you know and just remember you know I could I could pull up I never do because private messages they were sent privately for a reason if they wanted to share it with the world they would have commented on a post but I could for every negative comment that I've ever gotten I could pull up probably 20 positive yeah. messages and comments and yeah. beautiful like I absolutely adore when people reach out to me and share their story and introduce themselves and tell me about their loved ones and nine times out, out of ten it always starts with hi I hope you don't mind me reaching out and I'm like no reach out let's have a chat let's you I know, think that's probably the message I message. sent to you <laughs> yeah it's I get it so many times and I welcome like all of these messages because it just warms my heart on a daily basis when I get them. Um, but it's definitely, you know, like I had somebody come at me one time because I wasn't being a uh, considerate to the, um, the 
to people with disabilities and to people with vision impairments or people who I it literally was whenever captions become like a thing and they were like auto auto captions I don't know how to do that I feel really bad about it yeah I I genuinely didn't know it was a thing all of a sudden and I that was something I got attacked on and I got some negative feedback that I wasn't using captions and it's so funny because I literally sent a message into um like Haley was joking in the chat she's like Ashley you're Northern Irish slow it down and I was joking with her texting her there and I was like can we get you know a translator can we get somebody to help everybody else out to understand me another question and by the way I've just saw yeah we do we do well, hey, one of them before, um, Emma before you hop on and answer those questions what I would love is for each of you how can people follow you right like where do i we're follow you? marketing aren't we <laughs> where do i follow you all can you can you drop the social handles in in the chat maybe yeah i didn't even course. i didn't even know my handle <laughs> yeah if you follow me emma's on there <laughs> thank you <laughs> um so well, it's um absolutely okay. amazing like um to be like involved with this so it is um but it's we really appreciate everybody's love and support and we all talk like in the background of our social medias and we're all super good friends so we are and it, it's just it's heartwarming to get like the love and the feedback so it is um but I see somebody um while the girls are putting their handles in I see somebody um asked do you have any TikTok tips um and thanks for the love whoever sent this in um I typically I don't use like the TikTok app just as much um for the simple reason that when Instagram introduced their reels I find the Instagram app a lot easier to use um and I was that person that was sitting on TikTok like losing a full night of sleep because I was like binge watching TikToks um but yeah I absolutely love making reels on Instagram TikTok is very very similar um they both pretty much run the same thing but it's I will sit and scroll whenever I was saying that I take about three hours up to up to three hours on a Sunday I'll go through Instagram and I'll scroll through reels and see like what's a funny song what's a funny dance what is some stuff that people are posting and whenever you're scrolling reels I wonder will my phone show up when you're scrolling reels down in the corner where the music runs along you'll notice there's like a little arrow pointing up the way that means that the, the that specific sound is trending, which means it's really popular. It's showing on a lot of feeds. Yeah, I, this. I didn't have a clue about that. It's, it's getting a lot of attention. So what I'll do, you can click that sound and you can save it for later or you can use it straight away. So I'll sit and I'll like through the week, whenever I'm chilling out, killing time, doing whatever I'm doing, I'll save a load of audios that I really like, or, you know, I'll save, you know, you, if you click a uh, reel and you save it for later, you can go back in and watch them and I'll, I'll save them and I'll be like, oh, I really like that one. I'll make a little note on my phone about what my idea on how I can spin that on Huntington's is. And then I'll spend some time on Sunday and I'll, I'll get my tripod out, I'll get my ring light out and I'll, I'll recreate these videos in a way that I can spin them to Huntington's disease and to raise an awareness. Um, for anybody that's been following me for a long period of time, um, it used to be just hashtag I'm not drunk. But I wanted to move it to hashtag I'm not drunk lifestyle blog because I wanted to sort of share more than just my Huntington's journey. I wanted to share my adventures traveling and riding motorbikes and surfing and doing all like my fun hobbies just to show people that Huntington's disease is a part of my life. It is not my life. It's a part of it. And whenever I go to visit dad in the nursing home, we don't sit and talk about Huntington's disease. It never comes up. 
we sit and talk about the plane crash that he survived. We talk about his water skiing and how amazing he was. We talk about the holidays that he took before the plane crash. You know, we talk about all these amazing adventures and memories that we've created as young children or that my dad had before he had kids. And that's what I want. I want to sit in years to come, if I test positive or I test negative, whichever it might be, I want to sit and have conversations with my loved ones and my family and friends and all you wonderful people because you know my phone is going to be stuck to my hand <laughs> and I want to share all the amazing memories that I've had and the adventures that I have taken, you know, so that's that's a big part of my life, um, trying to show that it's it's not, my life is not Huntington's, it is a part of my life. Um, as far as I'm nice, actually, the other question is, um, hey guys, you are you very open with your real life acquaintances about your HD blogs? I get worried about having a huge disconnect between the self I show people to, I know superficially and the self that is HD positive and spent over 10 years caring for my mum who's HD positive and my pap who's had Alzheimer's. I, I really struggled with this for a long time because at work professionally, people always saw me as this like loud, funny, bit of a joker, like dealt with anything and and when I did my first blog that was about anticipatory grief, it was quite dark. And a couple of colleagues got really teary reading it. And they were like, God, we never really saw that side of it. Um, so I, I am now like unapologetically open. And it's quite intense. Like it can be quite a, a deep and emotional chat or like I'll be quite honest about stuff. But I think it's the only way for people to ever really support you is if you're open about how, how the struggles are. I mean, I can't speak to being HD positive, obviously, at all. And that's a whole different host of, of issues, isn't it? Of being self-conscious and wondering what people are going to think. But I think um, I I used to hide it a lot and I don't anymore because I think it's 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 so good to be able to be yourself and, and show if you're struggling. And that's part of like getting rid of that whole thing of like, it's not okay to cry. I think you need to show when things are hard and you need to be able to do that and not be ashamed of it or not feel like you can't say. Um, because you know there are some amazing people that will reach out and try and help as well or you might have one conversation with someone that changes your life about it or your thoughts about it um and I think it's responsible for us as well to show those dark times because there's lots of people who don't have a family you know my family are really lucky we've we've not had big a big falling out over the HD and I know a lot of families have or like Em said her brother's not as involved now I recognize that a lot of families don't aren't that fortunate or they might be in a more difficult financial situation or you know they might not have the help or stability that that we you know we've all got um so I think it's important to show that other side as well because some people might be like well I can't be positive today because I'm waiting for my test and I don't feel positive about it um I think I'm always trying to be honest because you know there are people that don't cope with it or can't cope with it as well because of the, the the cards that life's dealt them um and I think if you're not if you don't feel like you can be yourself I think you've got a question are you around the right people as well you want to surround yourself even if your circle's smaller like Em said surround yourself with people that you can be yourself around you can be vulnerable around you can be happy around um if you're around people that you don't feel like you can be that way I'd probably reconsider how close you are with them because they're probably not going to stick around when things get ugly yeah and that's literally exactly my life (laughs) and what's happened to me over the last few years if I'm completely honest is like I had a group of friends who I've been friends with for years really um and then just things as things were getting difficult and not even necessarily difficult but you know I'm I'm like I say I'm just rubbish at talking about my emotions and my feelings and I'm learning to open up and just talk about it um but I felt like I, I need people around me to be like, are you okay? And they need to sit me down and be like, but I can tell what them. Is okay. so, yeah, um, I'm not someone who's just going to come out and start talking about something. I need to be provoked okay. almost. Um, we'll provoke you. Thanks. <laughs> um, and yeah, now I've, I am, you know, I have got a circle of people around me who are like, but are you sure you're okay? And I'm like, well, actually, no, I've had a rubbish day or something like that, or this is going on. Um, but I've, I mean, the HD community is just 
it's oh, something it's else. So bold, isn't it? It's so strong, isn't it? It's such a loving community. Yeah. yeah. It's like such he really such, appreciates it as well, I think. Yeah. There's like yeah. love of like, I'm so glad it's here. <laughs> yeah. But it's like it's such a shame. Like that's so horrible. Communities, aren't we? Like we've got the least kind of recognition or um support, but like we're all in it. Yeah. 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 That's I I definitely like <sighs> I think to like answer that question I never really I didn't really have a choice in whether I wanted to tell people about Huntington's disease or not um it just kind of like kicked off um whenever dad was diagnosed it just sort of snowballed I went to my first Huntington's conference here when I was 17 I joined the board for the Northern Ireland charity in my early 20s and then I started getting involved involved with HDYO and then in 2016 I started blogging about it and it was actually when I was at the HDYO camp that year, it was held in Kent. Um, I met Charles, um, who's speaking tomorrow, and I, I love him. He's a dear friend. And it was an incident that happened in the summertime where my dad was publicly called drunk. And I felt so sorry for him. And I went home and I put a post up on Facebook and it wasn't anything aggressive. It was just, I have had a beautiful family day with my brother and my dad. We had so much fun. But to the lady who called my dad drunk very publicly, you didn't ruin it for us. We still had a great day. And I just happened to put on it, hashtag I'm not drunk. And then it was at the summer camp talking to Charles that I realized that I needed to do this and I needed to share my voice more publicly. Um, I had spoken at a medical training event here and I had spoken at a conference here and it was all very local um, to Northern Ireland. And then I just decided I would go for it. What's the, what's the worst that can happen? Um, and here we are many years later. Um, the worst thing that happened to me was I am involved in a phenomenal community. I have some of the most amazing friends online that I get to meet with whenever I can. I got to attend the HDSA Congress over in America. Um, I saved and saved and saved so hard and I flew myself over and it was a wonderful experience. I got to meet everybody over in America that I had connected with online. Um, but yeah, then I, I got hired by the charity here. So if I was to meet somebody like, let's be real people. The number one question I get is, when do you tell a guy you're dating about Huntington's disease? I'm single, so I don't know. Maybe that's why people ask me it. But I can't personally hide from that question. When I meet somebody, whether it be a new friend or, you know, I don't know, the male species, um, it's, hi, how are you? What do you do? And my answer to that was, I work for the Huntington's Disease Charity. Oh, how did you get into that? Well, my daddy has it, you know, or when I was younger, oh, it's your day off. What are you doing? I have to go like after my daddy. Oh, why? What's wrong with him? He has Huntington's disease. So I just never really hit it. My family are super open. Um, my parents are divorced, but they are remain super close. I have two wonderful stepsisters. And I just, I call him my stepdad because he's been around so long. Um, he's They're all wonderfully supportive. And we talk about it so open. I am truly blessed. And I know that not every family is the same. Um, and that's why I always welcome people to share their story with me. But it's, yeah, I honestly feel like I didn't have a choice. I I truly enjoy speaking about it and if it's something that you feel that you maybe want to do um definitely not to like not to like highlight HDYO but they do have some great resources to help you or I'm sure Emma and Emma don't mind me speaking on behalf of them any of us in the HD community who share our story public will help you and talk you through it and advise you I can remember Emma starting my pops and me I can remember you me and HD starting I can remember champions for HD starting and it just warms my heart seeing all these different you know people sharing their story um I will get over to meet HRH one day though Emma it's, it's, it's coming. <laughs> I'm coming to your house Emma <laughs> I think um someone's asked a, 
a question about the BBC, which I guess is probably more for you, Ash. Uh, I, I've been to Parliament. I did go to Parliament before COVID, but that is completely capturing. My business partner is ferocious. She just, she always gets the contacts and she's like, yeah, yeah I'm just going to be mother government. I'm like, all right. Okay. Casual. So, <laughs> what I would say is just, because I know like you all could probably, I mean, social media and your stories are so powerful. And, you know, I'm like, oh, we only have, I think, nine minutes left. And so, you know, time flies when you're having fun with with the three three amigos, three musketeers over here. But I have to get um, like a uh, egg timer. Egg no, timer. you're fine. I mean, you know, before we answer some of these other questions, I think like, you know, two things that come to my mind is like, you know, how often should someone be posting on social? Because like for me, that was a struggle where I'm like, oh, do I have to meet? Do I have to be posting something every day? You know, versus... I honestly don't know the algorithms now. It changes all the time. It, it's yeah. very fickle. And I think I think that's where if you're not going to do it for like a monetary reason, I would mm -hmm. post a, a, an amount of time that is healthy for you. Because yeah. some people, I find it quite overwhelming because if you get lots of messages after it's too, I probably post like once a week if that, because that's something I can manage. But some people might be best, you know, find it okay to post more often and get more answers, I guess. I don't think in this kind of Instagramming, it's going to make a massive impact on your numbers of followers. Um, I know that the more stories you post, you more likely to get more engagement. But in general, with Huntington's, people follow you because they want to, you know. And I yeah. think, I think post to an amount that is sustainable for you and your mental health. You don't want to put too much pressure on yourself, um, and you don't want to end up thinking of stuff to post because you feel like you have to post. I think that's a nice. Yeah. Thing you know, you post yeah. because something's happened and you feel, you know, I post because something comes into my brain. I'm like, oh, I want to post about this today. I did go through a stage where I try and post more, but they were just really unauthentic posts and kind of... I was going to say, it's not really... And, yeah, and I think, I think because it, it's a niche thing and it's, I mean, I probably should do more, but I think because it's a niche thing and it's a niche following, people are always going to appreciate what you do post. So don't put pressure on yourself, just do what makes you happy because it's supposed to be a bit of a release for you as well isn't it yeah no I'm, I'm exactly the same as you like I literally don't plan it I just do whatever I fancy and if something in particular has happened I'm like I might leave it a few days and I always try and think about it before I post something um mm. just so I can make sure that I'm saying the right thing or you know almost yeah. like a proofread um but I literally just post whenever whenever anything in particular has happened I don't just post yeah I think that shows through because that comes through in the way you write as well it's yeah it's like, like I'm it, hearing your voice read it because it's so it's not scripted it's literally this it's is authentic, what it is. isn't it yeah yeah and, and that's, that's what people want isn't it they want that real kind of experience yeah, yeah. that's it like post if you want to share your story online post with what you're comfortable with like you know don't worry about the algorithm don't worry about how many hashtags you are and are not supposed to use you know six months ago you were allowed to use 30 hashtags now you're only supposed to use between eight and 12 and another thing like please don't like the only reason why I know so much about social media is because it was a part of my previous job I had to know about it Ash, so that's secret that's the only reason why and I have been doing this like somebody who is good at mathematics please 2016 to 2022 how many years is that um but yeah I like y'all will know if you have followed me from the beginning I go dead quiet for months or weeks go on to my website right now when was the last time I posted a blog post although I do have to give a shout out to Charlie because she is redesigning my entire website and I am so She's excited amazing. to see it she is so creative and I love her deeply and she is my wife and I she's redesigning it at the minute and I'm so excited to see it um we're hoping it'll be finished yeah, shortly, totally. but no no pressure no pressure on her but um yeah don't worry about the algorithm and what you're supposed to be doing none of us do this for money none of us um you know it's different whenever you're like making a career out of it or you're like an influencer that you see, you will see in somebody's story where it says like ad or gifted or, you know, and you're doing it for fun. 
that's what you need to think about this I want to post this isn't it, doing it for that release it is like if anybody goes on to my Instagram page the first post you will see on my grid is me doing the absolute most stupidest dance in my garden which seriously needs the grass cut in a pair of purple crocs and socks like I don't care. I have no makeup on. I look like I just woke up, but I was so excited about Congress today. I just really wanted to put a video up. And this is one that I've wanted to do for quite a while. So I just went and done it and it made me giggle so much. And the HDYO team, I sent it to them and they were all giggling. And they were telling, you know, like, Ashley, settle down. You're going to need like three coffees this evening to get through your talk. You know, like, I was just so excited and it made me happy. And that's what's important in all this. Mm -hmm. You know, it's do what is happy for you and post however much or however little you want because I can promise you right now I follow a lot of different accounts and it is their job to know the Instagram algorithms and it is so up the left at the minute there's no understanding it so there's not you know it's 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 mental. Also not healthy for you because like no. these these channels were designed to addict you I was talking earlier when I talk about the social dilemma. It's a program on Netflix about the apps, and and mm. you have to be really careful that it can make you quite unwell, and it can be, become quite unhealthy to then rely on it constantly or rely on posting because you're doing it for validation. Do it because it's a release and because it it makes you feel connected, but don't don't kind of do it because you feel like you need to do it a certain amount of times a day. Yeah, the the goal you're right is I mean to go down the rabbit hole, and like Ashley was saying, it's scrolling on. TikTok or Instagram Reels until you're like, wow, what was I doing the last two hours? Not serving you at all. And if anything, it's just overstimulation. And mm -hmm. I do think it contributes to things like anxiety and phone addiction. I think having a really healthy relationship with it is a much better thing. Um, yeah. yeah. And, that's and I, I was just going to say, it's like, you know, just to sum, sum all this up is like, when it comes to social media, it's, it's setting boundaries, right? And I used to be like, I mean, I'm still like, we'll go on social a lot, but I've learned to try to realize when's like a trigger. So I'm like, okay, I got to stop social. Like I got to be off of it. Right. Because it's just so challenging, but um, two minutes left. So I'm going to say this is final kind of thoughts. And, and this is, you know, this will go into, I think a question we had about like the BBC news. I know you kind of answered the, the news piece of it, but like, all right, someone's new to the HD space or wants to get more involved what tips do you have for them for someone just starting out on social media contact ashley <laughs> yeah fo follow ashley <laughs> follow ashley all right well that was an easy question no the girls need to give themselves credit where credit is due both emma's are absolutely phenomenal um but honestly a piece of advice if you want to start sharing your story on social media just go for it and reach out to like literally go on Instagram and search you know like Huntington's disease hashtag Huntington's disease whatever it is you will find a wealth of knowledge and accounts and just message them hi my name's Ashley my dad has Huntington's disease I love your account I'd love to start sharing my journey have you got any advice and I promise you, you will get a very warm welcome and you will get a very kind message back. If you don't, you know, find, well, find your way. Like mine, when I first started, it's so different to now. Like when I first started, I tried to do like business type stuff or what I thought yeah. people would want to hear and structured. And now I'm just like, here's a picture of mum. She had a great day today. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it needs, it needs to be raw, yourself. doesn't it? Yeah. You and find that's yourself as well. And you find a way to be comfortable with kind of your style. And I think yeah. that you know people then grow to know you as well I'm I'm gonna speak for myself here because I don't want to make it sound like I'm pre you know like being stereotypical or anything um so I'm gonna speak for myself I am super nosy okay <laughs> I love watching <laughs> Instagram stories because I want to know what you're doing where you're going where did you buy that piece of clothing what where did you get your robot hoover what restaurant are you at can I go to it like I am so nosy I want to know what you're doing when you're doing it and why you're doing it so I just treat my Instagram like that I'm like People want to know what's happening with dad. At the minute, I can't currently see him. I haven't seen him since Christmas Eve. It's very upsetting. 
So I share that. And the amount of people, when I share the raw, honest, open, you know, my mental health, things about daddy, changing my job, that's when I get the most engagement. So it just goes to show people want to see the open and the honest, but at the same time, do what is comfortable for you. Do not feel because my life is an open book that yours needs to be the same. That is not the case. Share as much as what makes you happy. Social media is supposed to be fun, lighthearted, and a place where you can go to switch off and enjoy yourself. So make it that way and have it a space, a safe zone for yourself that you can just enjoy it. Mic drop. That's a great way to. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very great, much. Great way to end day one, <laughs> day one of Congress. And so I just wanted to thank each each of you for just hopping on here and just really sharing from the heart and sharing your personal stories. I think it's as I saw in the chat and even chiming in a bit myself. It's very relatable, and it's just good to kind of hear your experiences and how we're able to continue to, um, you know, talk about social media, but also figuring out boundaries and what works for one person may be different from someone else. So thank you. And so with that being said, I will say we are done with day one of the HEO Congress. Day two is tomorrow, but in the meantime, we do have sessions going on in between day one and day two, uh, especially for those in, in Asia, Australia, and uh, New Zealand region. So definitely take a look at the event site for all those details. Um, and with that being said, I don't know, I saw Matt hop on, but I think he might be frozen now. So with that being said, thank you all. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your day slash night. And we will see you tomorrow. Check out the booths for more information. Get out and also the photo booth, get your selfie in, get your thing going. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk soon. Bye everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.